Okay, thank you, Donna. Yeah, I mean, lots of uh, lots of complexity and a lot of difficult um, conversations in there, but but very well put together. Thank you, sir. So those guys who who know me well know I you know I, I love talking about scaling up all things business growth and moving forward. Unfortunately, we find ourselves uh, for many of us for the first time in an environment where you know almost every company in almost every sector has lost some part of its revenue and will still lose more of its revenue in the in the current um, complexity. The good news on that is that a lot of the skill set and a lot of the drivers behind scaling up can also be leveraged uh, to make sure that you that you survive this initial process and also that you um, that you can thrive afterwards. You will still need quality leadership, scalable infrastructure, um, and out of the box marketing as you move forward. Donna has spoken a lot about you know leadership, uh, how to take up the reins as a leader in this time, and really you know um, man up and have those big conversations and make the big calls fast. Well, Helen has spoken lots about scalable infrastructure that can support your business in a time like this. And then, you know, the, 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 mar the marketing and sales and business development side will, will touch on a little bit uh, later in this session. So surviving and thriving, these, these two things uh, for the time being. I think the first part is we want to make it through the current crisis. Each of us as a business owner want to make sure that the company we've built over the last one year, five year, 10 years, 20 years, doesn't get completely destroyed in this time. So you want to keep your brand, you want to keep your business, um, you want to make sure that, it, that it, it doesn't collapse completely. And then you also want to, regardless of how deep the curve is for you, um, you want to make sure that your business can excel in the business world of the future. So a couple of things that I think is important. Firstly, to protect top line downside, to make sure that you protect your revenue, to brutally cut costs. We're going to talk about these points just now. Ensuring liquidity and balance sheet strength to make sure that you have cash in the bank to pay, uh, to pay everything you need to every month. And then pivoting and improving your offering to make sure that you can really do great business uh, in the future to make sure that your offering is in line with what the business world will be once we come out of this disaster. So the first one on protect your, your top line revenue. I think the, the core point for me here is client relationships, guys. So, you know, communicate more often than you think is necessary with your clients in this time. They want to hear from you. They want to hear things are okay. They need someone to speak to. They need someone to relate to. Everyone's going through a tough time. Lots of people have their kids at home. Lots of people are alone at home. Like everyone needs a human to speak to you. So pick up the phone as often as you can and, and call, your, uh, call, those, uh, call those clients and, and, and appeal to their human side. Um, you, know, you want to also make sure that you add more value than what is expected in this time. People are going to be under pressure. They're going to be looking at where can they cut costs. So make sure that you are so valuable to them in your, in your uh, product or service offering that you are the last thing to, to go. And then in some cases, we're going to have to compromise, guys. We're going to have to have the conversations with some of the clients who are going through a really, really tough time um, to just say, look, look we realize you, you cannot pay the full retainer or your full um, you know, delivery value the, this round. Can we, do, can we agree on 80% or can we agree on payment terms over the next three months? Figure something out where it's you know it's always going to be a negotiation, but appeal yeah it has to be it also has to be human. So make sure that you that you um, that you really work with the guys on that. Um, my favorite one of my favorite quotes from Gladiator is what we do in this life echoes into eternity. And I think if I think if I look at this crisis, I think what we do as business owners and um, and leaders in our companies in this current time will really echo into the future of our of our business. The client relationships, the staff relationships we, we, um, we forge now will really last for a lifetime. So do invest wherever you can. And then there's nothing like new business to stop the bleeding. When your top line is, is going down, the clients we see are, do, are doing the best are the ones who, for, you know, for each client they lose, they bring on a new one. For each two clients that have to scale down, they bring on a new one. So you want to expand your marketing efforts. You want to expand your lead generation efforts, like 10 exit if you have to, like, um, everything is everything is uh, is digital, so you need to now you know figure out new ways to sell. You need to figure out new geographies you can you can tackle, uh, and just make sure that you keep building on the top line revenue. Because if you're just going on the defensive, you know you might see how the top line just gradually gradually uh, decreases um, over time. So an interesting thing here about geography is you know you're now as close to a person sitting in America or in uh, in uh, the UK or in Europe. Um, as the person, as the, the service provider or product offer, uh, uh, product offering across the street, because everyone has to jump on a Zoom call. So you use this unique opportunity to get close to customers who are far, uh, far away from you ge ge geographically, who will now be willing to meet with you. Where generally they would have said, "Look, come have a coffee with me, so I can see you." Now they can't do that at all. So it's a quite interesting uh, opportunity, actually. 
Um, then the next thing after protecting top line, you know, we, we want to make sure that we cut costs in accordance with the scenario we find our company in. So, you know, Donna mentioned some companies are seeing 10% or 20% reduction in, in revenue. Some guys are seeing 50 or 80 or 95% in uh, reductions in, in turnover. So you want to figure out what is your current reduction in revenue and what do you project over the next three to six months will be the downside on your revenue. And then you have to cut costs in, the, in accordance. You have to figure out what things can you cut out right now to make sure that the business can, can see it through this period. So go with, make sure that you have one person responsible for each line item on the income statement, for each line item on the balance sheet, like wherever there's cash flow or income and expenses uh, going out, uh, make sure, that, uh, make sure that, you, um, that you have someone responsible for looking at how can we negotiate it down, cut it out, uh, consider putting it on pause, et cetera, in accordance with how much you actually have to cut to get to, to stay within your, within your revenue. The next point is then to just you know, stay liquid and stay alive. Ideally, everyone would want to have three months worth of uh, expenses in their bank account. But realistically, not all small and mid-sized companies have that luxury. And if that's not you, it's too late to start now, right? We can't now start building up a pool for our businesses uh, to, have a, you know, to have that piggy bank we can delve into in a crisis like this. So let's talk about the options out there. You, uh, I think a lot of you guys joined, joined to hear a bit about the relief funds. So look, there is quite a lot of different options out there. I think one of the questions was like, where can we find a list of everything? I think the, the point is there, there are so many disjointed different offerings. So we wanna just touch base on a couple of ones that I think are, um, are individually valuable. And I'm gonna just, just browse through them very quickly for the, for the sake of time. We will be sharing everything in a group afterwards. So you guys will have access to all the information. So the, the first one is the, the Oppenheimer's um, Fund called, called SAF, South African Future Trust. Uh, so this is a five-year um, interest-free uh, loan from the for Oppenheimers for companies under 25 million revenue, but older than two years. If that's, if that's you, you can have a look at this. It's administered through the banks. So regardless of which one of the big banks you're banking with, you can apply through your, through your bank for this. The downside of it is just, you know, it's 750 Rand per month per qualifying employee for a limited amount of months. So the maximum amount you can borrow from it is like 10, 11,000 Rand. Per, uh, per employee. So if you have you know, three or five high, paying high paid employees, this might not be worth uh, the effort. If you have a big pool, you have, you have 50 um, kind of lower, um, lower sa uh, in salary employees, this could be a very valuable way of getting an interest-free um, uh, interest loan to be able to see this time through. The next one is the, the Rupert Family Fund. It's called uh, Sukuma Relief Program. It's now run by business partners. Um, you know, it's, it's soft loans for 250,000 to a million rand um, for, uh, for tax compliant companies who, who can get through the business partners due diligence process. Um, so the, the, there's, I think there's a 12 month uh, relaxation on your, your interest and your repayments on the loan. And then after that, it's, it's interest at prime. It's also a, de a, decent, a decent amount, you know, a pool of funds to help you see, see through the process. The downside is just within three days, they got more than 10,000 applications and they closed it. So if you haven't applied, it's too late now. We have heard that, you know, they, from someone within business partners that there is a chance that they might, you know, accumulate further funds now with everything the president also spoke about. Many more funds will, will probably flow. So keep an eye on it. You can subscribe on their site to get details as soon as it open, uh, opens up again. Then all of your different banks have their own offerings. I'm not going to go into any ones in any detail. Most of the banks are willing to look at, you know, repayment holidays for the for the for a three month period or so. So if you have specific um, uh, loan finance from any of the big banks, speak to your banker directly or have a look at their websites. This is fairly, uh, you know, fairly self explanatory. But you have to, in most cases, uh, make an individual appeal for why you should, um, why you should, uh, you know, get a, a holiday on your on your repayments. The other one we're quite excited about from the government side is, um, is, is the, um, the debt relief finance scheme uh, from uh, the Department of, uh, of Small Business. Uh, it's administered by CIFA. Uh, it's, it's, uh, originally, it was a half a billion rand pool um, of about five, loans of about up to 500,000 rand. It's at prime minus 5%, so 2.75% interest rates, really, um, really attractive. Uh, there's also grants that can, be, um, that can be paired with this, so quite an interesting one to look at if you're a South African business uh, and, and the 500,000 rands relief finance would make, a, would make a difference for you. We also, you know, we've, we work closely with CFA on many fund, funding transactions for clients. We know we've got a really short turnaround time on this. So if you're looking for a couple of hundred thousand rand quickly, this could be a really cool option to, to have a look at. 
you know, then, then the IDC and the DTI and the Department of Tourism and a whole bunch of other guys all got quite specific, uniquely industry tailored um, different funds that I'm not going to, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into detail um, about, but you can draw the information online. It's, it's pretty good. And we'll put, we're putting together, uh, you know, an information deck with, uh, with all of the links and so to these guys. My only caution with these relief funds would be, guys, almost all of it's debt, right? So every cent you use now to cover your expenses, you're going to have to repay in future to whichever financier you choose at whichever interest rate. So one of the saddest things I've heard in the last while from an entrepreneur is we only just finished paying off our debts from the 2008 crisis in January and now this. So that breaks my heart. These guys have spent you know, 10, 12 years trying to repay the debt they made in the previous crisis. So don't be that entrepreneur. Try to bring your expenses down in accordance with your income, but you don't dig a too deep hole because it's really painful. You know, even if you get access to a million, two million, however many millions worth of uh, relief finance, you have to repay that from future cash flow profit. And that's a painful process, especially if you're tackling the process coming out of a crisis with a smaller company, with a smaller client base in future that has to carry this massive debt uh, load. So be very careful of that. And then just on the thriving side, um, there was a report by some of the Bain and Company partners that I thought, thought was really valuable on, you know, how do you position your business to thrive during and after this crisis in the, the, in the new world of business? And I think that the core message there was, you know, accelerate simple and digital. So pivot to prepare the company for what will come and what the world business world will look like in the future. So the transition to digital has been, you know, fast forwarded. Uh, you want to make sure your company experience, your client experience is digital and it's simple um, and it's, at a, it's done at a low cost so that, you know, that you can survive and that you can thrive in the future. They also mentioned that, you know, incremental improvements will simply not suffice right now. Companies have to fast forward themselves years into the future of digital advancement in just a couple of weeks or months if they're going to make the most of this crisis. Then the four components that they list as part of a bold plan to tackle this process, which I think is valuable for each business owner, is the first one is how do you excel in moments of truth? Like that your clients, the first time someone contacts you, the first time a client onboards, the client meeting once a month or once a quarter or whatever, when you deliver your product to them for the first time after lockdown, that kind of experience, like what those key moments, like how do you make those amazing? You want to show up in your value proposition that you stand out from the crowd. Like what is it that makes your company and your offering unique and really build that out and make the marketing uh, message around it really crisp and clear that people can, you know, people can know, like you stand, you know, you stand out, you have something that's of real, of, of real defendable value and then provide, you know, provide easy, convenient sales setup. So make sure that um, your onboarding is, is seamless, quick and, and painless that, that clients can, new clients can onboard quickly and then rip out the bad costs. We spoke about, uh, we spoke about the complexity around, um, you know, just bringing down the expenses in accordance with your, with your, in, with your income. Then, you know, just a, you know, just a last, last kind of thought for me is, you know, this too shall pass. Um, it's, it's, it's easy to say right now, um, but some perspective was given to me recently by one of our, our mentors um, that works with our board. He said, look, he's been through seven different uh, crises the last, uh, in, in the, you know, since 87, since he, uh, you know, started his own company. Um, and some of the things that were <laughs> that I thought was quite good, good to hear, like each time it felt like the end of the world and things would never get better. Each time there was sudden and massive unemployment. Each time it felt like this one is different and this one is the big one. You know, that's really, I think, how we all feel about coronavirus right now. But what he says here is each time the markets recovered, each, each time the unemployment recovered, and each time the world learned something different and, uh, and new, new ways emerged in which to improve what we do, and each time incredible individuals and companies um, emerged as the ultimate winners. So, so there's, a, there's, a, you know, there's a lot of hope in that. You know, he's been through six rounds of this. Um, many of us haven't had the luxury of that much experience and that much hardship. Um, but at, at the end of the day, eventually this will, this will pass and something new will emerge. He says, you know, unfortunately, this is what happened to everyone in their career multiple times over. So prep yourself for that. Prep your mind for that. Pay attention, read, learn, talk with smart people, um, and you, you know, be a participant to the fullest. Build your relationships and make sure you continue building out your network continuously. Expand yourself in all ways you can. Take care of yourself mentally and physically. Remain optimistic. And you, know, you are defined by how you act in the, in the tough times, not the easy ones. So define yourself now. I thought that was a really good um, message to just, uh, to just finish off with here.
Um, so hey, Leo here, one of the founders of Outsource CFO. If you enjoyed this video, make it official. Click subscribe.